Introducing first, the challenger on my left, riding out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with silver trim, hailing from Wembley, London, England. He weighed in at 18 stone, one pound, eight ounces, with a record of 27 wins and four losses. He has 20 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making his first attempt at a world title. Here is a 2000 Olympic gold medalist, the former European heavyweight champion, introducing the always dangerous, ugly, A4. the ring ready to go the defending world champion on my right fighting out of the red corner wearing blue and red trunks trimmed in the union jack hailing from bermondsey london england he weighed in at a ready 15 stone eight ounces with a record of 24 wins and one loss he has 22 big wins coming by way of knockout Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former Unified Cruiserweight World Champion. Tonight, making the second defense of his heavyweight title, here is the hard-hitting and defending WBA Heavyweight Champion of the World, introducing the Haymaker. Once again, our referee in charge, Luis Pabon, now to give instructions. Okay, guys, I give you instruction. Okay, guys. I give you instruction in the dressing room. Le have a clean match, okay? Good luck and God bless you. You've read and heard the millions of words spoken by both fighters. The hype has been deafening, but now the truth is the action that's about to unfold all the answers coming up david hay has 15 wins inside three no rounds one. he's built for speed harrison says this is his destiny his night at last can he suddenly produce the performance he thinks he's capable of to do this Look well, at him towering over Hay. Well, his body language was good during the introductions. He was claiming the centre of the ring. He wasn't hiding in the corner. Had his hands up before the bell sounded. He marched straight up. He's trying to go forward. So positive signs. He fancies the job at this moment. Uh, well, that change. If a big punch is detonated on his chin. But positive look about Harrison, which is encouraging. Over 18 stone in there. Audley Harrison, Hay, who decked John Ruiz in his last defence with almost his first punch of the contest. Big, booming right hand. He's only fought one southpaw before in the pros and finished him off in 40 seconds in a European title fight. But he was knocked out by the southpaw Jim Twight in the amateurs. Hay. KG stuff, Jim. Yeah, but his upper body movement is good. You know, showing little feints. He's trying to draw that southpaw jab from Harrison. But Harrison knows what's expected, and he's not obliging. So, two good pros who know what they're doing, just boxing their way into this, concentrating and not making any mistakes. In the amateur days, Harrison was the sorcerer and Hay the apprentice. Things have changed so much now. Looking for an angle for the punch again. It's been a bit of a standoff so far in this opening round, a reconnaissance mission, if you like. Yeah, that, that could be one of the problems for Hay. Harrison is quick on his feet, he's very defensively minded. So he's going to have to lunge it now and again to get close. He's trying to, to shuffle his way close, it's not working. So he tried to lunge with the shot there. There's hardly been a decent punch landed in the opening round yet. A couple of flicks to the body from here. I mean, you have to expect this. When you're in with a man who can take your head off with one shot, then you can't blame Harrison maybe for just warming his way into things here. But he's looking for him already. Almost exaggerated caution in this opening round. One or two boos from 
restless fans. They both know that each other have got a bit of a dig and are respectful of that. No punches landed in this round so far. And there are, what, a few seconds left of it. Well, he looking the more positive, but just can't close the range. Harris is making sure of that, so not too much happened, and the crowd are aware of that. Don't be impatient. Don't be. Forget the boo. OK? Your job is to terrify. Adam Bird with David Hay, looking very thoughtful in the corner. And that first round, I have to say, it was a nil-nil draw. That's exactly what it was. And what you have to remember in this kind of fight, he is the one who's expected to produce. So if we get another couple of rounds like this, then he's the one who's going to have to take the bull by the horns, take some chances. He is the champion, he is the one who brings excitement. So that's when he could run on to something. Look at Hayes' right glove, up very high, worried about maybe that left hand that Harrison flattened Michael Sprock with, aware of that. But can he engineer any angles of his own? He's unusually cautious, David Hay, almost like he was with Nikolai Valuev on the night he won the title when he made the Russian just lunge at him and miss all night. It was an unsatisfactory affair. There's something has to give soon. Yep, he cannot do this for any great length of time but, but because the fans won't put up with it. I mean, there was euphoria after the, the Valoev victory, although it was one of the poorest fights I've seen. This is more like it. But you see, again, he is having to lunge forward. He cannot box his way close. He's having to lunge with the punches and there won't be the same power in them. I just wonder whether Harrison, even though he's a southpaw, might be able to land the right hand because look at the left glove of Hay, which is low, and he has been caught by that before as well. Whether he could surprise him with that, all the talk about the backhand, the left of Harrison. I think the Harrison plan is to get into the second half of the fight, whatever method you have to use to do that. And I think the referee's going to have to call for a bit of action, he's done that. He has. Luis Pavon from Puerto Rico says. How about some action, guys? And he's well within his rights to do that. I think the three-stone weight difference is a disadvantage in the first half of the fight, but an advantage if the fight goes into the later stages, and I can assume that is the plan the Harrison can't have. Do whatever's necessary to still be there, seventh and eighth round. Harris had to take a right hand there from Hay, who's done a little bit more in this second round. Well, that is a comparative remark, and he gets there again with the right hand. But again, leaping with the punches, so the, there's, there's no power in those shots because he's not setting himself. Power comes from speed and good balance. He's completely off balance in order to get some sort of punch home. But it's Hay who's trying to make the fight anyway in round two. Still very, very negative. Audley Harrison, I think one southpaw jab is just about all I've seen from him, really, so far. Ian, I think this is what we have to expect from Audley Harrison. I mean, he's been reluctant throughout his career. You cannot expect him to take chances against David Hay. I don't expect him to do that. Hayes round, it has to be. OK, that's what I want you to do. She needs Saluki in the corner of West Coast trainer in the USA. Fast, man, when you got your feet on the... Now, oh, but it's that time to me, I think that's about the only punch he's landed hey. so far. Yeah, Harrison. and you can see the look on his face as soon as it landed, he was ready to get out of there, <laughs> and there he goes. But this is has to be expected of Harrison. It's in his psyche to box like this anyway. He's an on-top fighter. He has to get on top before he lets the, the big punches go. But the, the good news for the fans is that he is expected to do better, so he is, we're reaching this stage, he is going to have to produce something or the fans will be on his back. I have really seen an awful lot of the speed we were talking about and thought we'd see from Hay when he came in at only just over 15 stone. That, by the way, is nearly 12 pounds less than he weighed last time against John Ruiz.
but that's because even for his size, Harrison is quick on his feet. He's been backing off. As soon as he nudges himself into punching range, Harrison takes that little half step back, just trying to draw with the good right hand there. Harrison grab and hold. And another right hand and another body shot. Hay goes to work, still nothing from Harrison. And at some point in this fight, he is going to have to lay it on the line on this his biggest professional night if he wants to become a world champion. Now the big right hand has hurt him. He was stunned by that, the gloves were dropped. Hay knows it. Looks for an uppercut. Gets into him here, he's getting to him here. Oh, big shots raining through. Harrison has to suck it up, he does suck it up. Ian, that was a tremendous punch. Full credit for taking that. He needs to grab hold. He needs to grab hold of David Hayes. Claude Orlean Harrison. Down he goes in round three. Can he get up? Counts at six. He gets up at eight. Shows the courage. He does want to go on. But Hay hits very hard. And he hurts. And he's going to finish it here. I think he does finish it. All over in round three. There's your answer. David Hay shows his class in a fight in which Audley Harrison barely threw a punch. Well, the fight reached the stage when he was the one who was expected to do something, and he certainly did that. The speed, the power completely took charge. Full credit to Harrison, not on his performance, but for a couple of those tremendous punches that he took to the chin and remained upright. Credit also for coming up off the floor and trying to get back in when he was completely out of things. We won't call it a tremendous fight, we'll call it a tremendous finish for David Hay. The pressure is off him now, he could not afford to lose tonight. His whole career, his whole life was on the line and he produced the goods. At least Harrison did get up, he didn't stay down and wait for the count. Which would have been an easier route, he got up, he took his licks I guess, but I think he's going to be desperately disappointed. You wonder really if that has to be the end. There they are, the old amateur friends who've become foes. Maybe, maybe now, they'll make it all up again. There's personal messages there, but the apprentice of old has beaten the sorcerer of old there. And really, he blew it away. David Hay is class. I think you saw again there. I think he is a very, very heavy hitter. Yep, and I feel... As I said, as he entered the ring, now that he's up from cruiserweight, he doesn't have to battle with the scales. I think he's punching even harder, and I don't think there's any heavyweight in the world today, including both of the Klitschko's, who could take the power if David catches them cleanly on the chin. He hits hard enough to knock out any heavyweight. That's why I'm complimenting Harrison on the fact that he took some tremendous punches before he folded. But will he regret that he did not let one big left hand of his own go? But you have to say, it was a dreadfully negative performance by Harrison, that. Yes, it was, but we've had so many of those, we couldn't expect them to be any different. We know he is Audley Harrison. Come on, Jim, not even when he's fighting for the world title, when he says it's his night of destiny. We, we, we accept that, do we? Ian, we have to accept it. But I think his plan was to try to get through the early stages, to cover up and hopefully make some sort of impression when the pace slowed. He couldn't cope with David's power, he couldn't cope with his speed. All he could do was try and get some rounds by. But you can see here, completely gone, showing courage, staying up right there. I mean, at least three punches there should have put him on the floor. So we'll give him that credit. We couldn't expect him to do anything else. He's oddly Harrison, he spent a career doing this. Just not in the same class, as I said before the first bell sounded, he is a genuine world-class warrior, Harrison is not. But we were invited to believe in the build-up to this fight that suddenly he would reinvent himself. Tonight it would all be different, well, but Ian, it wasn't different. Ian, if you did believe that, it's your own fault. No, I don't, I'm not, believe, I'm not no, saying I believed it, it. Exactly, because he said it before every fight and he said it after every fight, every comeback, but look at what he's taking here. This man, David Hay, is a totally different class to Audrey Harrison. We thought that when the match was made. Well, a little bit hypnotised with the talk of Harrison. But when push came to shove, different class altogether. And he proved it, didn't he? We thought he was, and in the ring, after that dreadful opening round when nothing happened, Hay went to work, and once he got him going like this, there was only ever going to be one outcome.
No, oddly, managing to finish on his feet, which is a plus. But will he regret not even letting one big left hand go? That would be the big disappointment for me. Not once did he throw the big booming left hand that could have won him a world title. Didn't even throw it one. Was he landed one decent jab, and that was his contribution. I'm not shocked, slightly surprised, but let's remember Audley has done this so often in his previous career. All credit to David Hay, who proves his world class. Maybe now we can move on and see him fight one of the Klitschko brothers who hold other versions of the world heavyweight title. I think the world wants to see that. As for Audley Harrison, never take away his Olympic gold medal, but it has to go down as a desperately disappointing professional career. Here it is officially with Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. One minute, 53 seconds in round number three. Our referee in charge, Luis Pabon, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. And still, the WBA heavyweight champion.